I'm Vince Graves, Technical Advisor at Sega Manufacturing. To reach any of our customer care support staff, call us at 815-297-9500 or email us at customercare at sega.com. When troubleshooting refrigeration issues, the first thing we want to do is check the temperature reading on our machine. Depending on your keypad, if you hit the pound button, the display will read to you the temperature of the delivery system inside of your machine. If you have a numeric keypad, it's the 10 key. Not in the service menu, just in regular VEN menu, will show you the temperature of your machine. After we've seen our temperature reading, we want to find out if we think that's an accurate reading. If it's way above room temperature, we may have a temp sensor issue that's reading poorly. Or if we know that our drinks are warm, but our temperature reading is saying it's 40 degrees, then we know our temp sensor is bad. If we get an accurate reading, the next thing we want to do is check our set point and make sure that our machine is set to cold. So we'll want to open up our machine, press our blue button on our control board to enter the service menu. You'll want to reference your owner's manual on this to find out the exact steps to set your set, your set point. On this machine, we press the number five to enter the options menu, and then number eight will get us the set point. From there, we can edit it and change it to whatever we would like. Make sure it comes somewhere close to 43 degrees, which is how it comes from the factory. You can go a few degrees below or above, depending on where you want to be, but much below 39, and you could cause some freezing issues. Uh, too warm, and obviously you could have some complaints from your customer. So we want to be somewhere in the area of 43 degrees. Once you have your temperature set point set correctly, the other thing we want to check in our programming is that our machine type is set to cold. So we'll press our blue service menu button. We're going to press 4 for configuration and 0 for advanced configuration. Now with all of our machines, to enter advanced configuration, you'll have to enter a password. With this software, the password is 2314. Now we're in our advanced configuration. We'll press 4 again, and our machine here is set to snack because our cooling deck is not hooked up. But you will want this to be set at cold, or else your cooling deck will not turn off and on in cycle. So we would press 4 to edit, and then we can toggle back and forth between cold or snack. We want to make sure it's set to cold, and then we would hit save. Once we've checked our settings and we know our machine is set properly, we want to inspect our refrigeration deck below the delivery system. Very important first step here is to power off the machine. Make sure you're unplugged from the wall before you start touching anything down here in the cooling deck. Our condenser is on the left. We want to make sure that this is clean and clear from any debris so that we've got maximum airflow. We've also got vents on the door to keep clean. As we look at our cooling deck, we have our compressor in the middle, condenser on the left. We've got our relays over here on the right. And in the top, labeled, we have our temp sensor and our power supply. When we're diagnosing cooling issues, one thing we want to listen for when the machine is on is to see if we have any fans running or if we can tell if the compressor's on. Once we've checked our settings and programming, and we know that our machine is set correctly, we want to then come down and take a look at the cooling deck. This is below your delivery system at the bottom of the machine. One of the first things we want to know when diagnosing a cooling issue is if we have fans running, and if we can tell if the compressor's been running or not. The easiest way to tell would be to put your hand in your delivery chute and see if you can feel any air moving. If your fans are running, you will feel a slight bit of air moving but it may not be cold. Then we can touch our black compressor and see if it feels cool, warm, or hot to the touch. If it feels cool to the touch, chances are it hasn't been running. If it's warm to the touch, it's been running normally. And if it's hot to the touch, maybe even extremely warm, then we know it's been running a lot, possibly working overtime, and we could have a cooling issue. Also, our condenser on the left, we want to make sure that that is clean and clear of any debris, as well as our door vents. 
to make sure we have maximum amount of airflow through our cooling deck. To the right of the compressor is our two blue relays. And above that, we can see labeled our temperature sensor and our power supply. Before we touch anything with our relays or our plugins, we want to make sure that our machine is powered off. Once you've unplugged your machine, we want to check these connections. Make sure we don't have any wires that aren't plugged into the relay. We've got a blue and a black plugged into the second and third terminals, and then usually a red and a gray or a red and a white plugged in on the vertical terminals to the side. We want to make sure that those are seated properly. And our plugs above for our temperature sensor, we want to make sure that this is plugged into its harness. It will be slightly loose, but make sure that our wires are pushed into its connectors, and the same for the power supply. We want to make sure that the wires are pushed into their plastic connector and that the connector is fully seated. The other end of the connectors are right behind this plate, and we can check that those wires are placed on correctly as well. Another thing we want to inspect is if we see anything that looks like it's ice. If we have any freezing in the deck, then the air will not be able to circulate as the fans will be frozen. So we'll have a cooling issue there, and it's usually because the deck has frozen itself. If that's the case, we want to just leave it unplugged for at least 24 hours to let the ice melt, and then plug it back in, reset our temperature, and make sure we're at 43, and see if it runs properly. Once we've checked all of our connections, we can power back up and again check to see if we have fans running and if we have a compressor running. Once we've diagnosed that we have fans and compressor or that our compressor is not running or that we have fans that aren't working properly, we could have a relay issue, we could still have a temp sensor issue, or our compressor could be low on Freon, in which case you'll want to call customer care and we can help you diagnose further. When replacing your cooling deck, the first thing you need to do is unplug your machine from the wall. It's very important before you touch any of these wire connections or relays that your machine is powered down. Once you're powered down, the first step is to remove the blue thumb screws or in certain models, their actual drivers. Remove your two thumb screws, one in the divider and one usually right off the front leg of your compressor. Once I've removed those thumb screws, I can remove my divider plate. Now I need to disconnect my wires. We recommend that you take a picture of these relays and connections before you disconnect them so that when you put your new deck in, you have a reference point. Our temperature sensor and our power supply are plastic harnesses that simply unplug from the plate. And now we have our blue and black from our relays that we want to disconnect, top and bottom, and our reds from the side. Some of these can be a little difficult to come off. We just work them back and forth and make sure that we're holding on to our boot or our spade connector, not the wire itself. Once I've disconnected my wires from my relays, my temp sensor, and my power supply, I need to feed the cables that are coming through the sidewall back through this hole to get them out of the way so I can slide my cooling deck out. Once we have our cables pulled through the sidewall, we can remove our cooling deck. You see that all of our cooling deck components are mounted to this steel tray, so it all pulls out as one unit. Once we've removed our tray, we can get our new one, push it back into the hole, once my new deck has been placed, I simply feed my wires back through the side hole. Once they're through, I replace my rubber grommet and put that in place. And then I can reconnect my wires back to my relay. Snap my plugs back in for my temp sensor and my power supply. And then I can power back up, make sure my settings are correct, and wait for my compressor to kick on.